I'd like to tell a little story on myself about the heavenly undertaker. You know, the word undertaker, as its primary meaning, is actually one who takes the risk and management of a business, an entrepreneur. The second meaning is one who prepares the dead for burial, arranges and manages funerals. That's the common one we understand. But I was thinking of the verse in Isaiah, where Isaiah says, Lord, I am oppressed, undertake for me. That's Isaiah 38 and verse 14. He is the ultimate undertaker in the true sense of the word. Underneath are the everlasting arms. He holds us up. He takes the risk and management of our lives. And uh, just this past week, I was privileged to participate in the funeral of a dear friend, our sister Kathy Leach, uh, down in southern Alabama. And I was very sick. I had uh, bronchitis. I'd had a fever. I'd been really quite ill. And when I went to the funeral, I was really quite weak. And uh, when I went to step up onto the platform, I was shaking. And the Lord had helped me, encouraged me. And in my studies, I had been thinking about that beautiful uh, acrostic, that alphabetic acrostic, Proverbs 31, the uh, portrait of the virtuous woman. And um, I had a little outline on the passage. And um, as I began to speak, my first point was, uh, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? I talked a little bit about the idea that that a blood-red ruby of the same carat weight was actually more valuable than a diamond. And uh, so that the writer of this passage knew what he was talking about. Well, Kathy Leach's middle name was Jewel. And as I spoke on that, um, the, the preciousness of the people of God to the heart of God, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I just felt the Lord undertaking for me. And he changed my message entirely on the fly. And all of a sudden, all of my other points evaporated and the Lord took over. And he redirected my heart after thinking about that price far above rubies to Isaiah 51 verse 1, where we read, Listen to me, you that follow after righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock from which you were hewn, and to the hole of the pit from which you were digged. And so the Lord led me to talk about jewels, to talk about um, a jewel before it's found is of virtually no value, lying there in the dirt, attached to the bedrock. It doesn't look like much at all. And so the jewel had to be found. And I talked a little bit about how this dear sister was found by the Lord as a child and rescued. I thought of the scripture that Jesus told the story of the, of the man who for joy sold all that he had and bought the field in which was contained the treasure. And then we began to think about how the jewel had to be cleaved. And the cleaving of the jewel is cutting away, breaking away everything that gets in the way of the light. The beauty of the jewel is actually in the light. And the role of the jewel is to merely reflect the light, to allow the light to shine through it. And this was the whole story of our sister Kathy and how the Lord had taken her and used her as this 
purveyor of the light of heaven through her life. And then we thought about the polishing and how the things that rub us the wrong way. Kathy had her challenges um, with her a family and in life circumstances. But those are the very things that polish us and make us even more like Christ and allow the light to shine through even more beautifully. And then, of course, those beautiful words from Malachi, they shall be mine in the day that I make up my jewels. And finally, going to the new Jerusalem, the capital city of heaven, and God's eternal dwelling place fashioned out of gems on which are engraved the names of those who have been saved by his grace, eternally reflecting and magnifying the glory of the one who is the light of heaven. The Lamb is the light thereof. And the Lord just took over the whole message. And I had no idea I was going to speak about this when I shakily ascended the platform. And so this glorious truth that, that the Lord is our undertaker. He's ready to take us up, to hold us, to support us, to sustain us. And yes, to speak through us for the light to shine through us. And I was so overjoyed uh, the other day to receive a note from her husband, Brother Scott, who wrote, a co-worker asked the Lord Jesus to save her today. She had been to the funeral and said she wanted to be a woman like Kathy Leach. She saw the light of the Lord Jesus shining through Kathy Jewel Leach. And this is our privilege and you know, in our weakness and our failure, I really didn't preach the funeral sermon. The Lord took over and he shared what he wanted people to hear. And using her life, he shone his light through her and attracted others, not to Kathy, but to the light that shone through her. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And this dear woman saw the light of Jesus shining through her life and wanted to be like that too. May the Lord encourage us. He takes us in our weakness. He takes us in our inadequacy. And he overrides all of our deficiencies and shines forth his light and attracts people to Christ, even through those who are weak and failing and incapable. And my little outline, bless its heart, <laughs> wasn't what he wanted to say. And he's the Lord. And he undertook for me. That's the kind of undertaker you want. Someone who doesn't just look after your funeral, but looks after your whole life and your eternity. And so we say these beautiful words, the words of Hezekiah, actually, Lord, undertake for me.